Thank you very much, Riv, and great cast on the day so far. I'm here to break down a play from the CLG game that actually got CLG back into it. And this is gonna involve all of the map, and that's why we have this up here for you guys, because this originates, and a lot of the action is gonna happen right in this little spot. Soon as I get that up there. Perfect, right there. You're gonna see Zion Spartan over the wall. He has the option to interrupt a back here from LeBlanc, from Xiao Wei Xiao. He decides not to, because a three-man unit from CLG is gonna come right in here and go around Hecarim, who's pushing top lane. Meanwhile, while this is happening, you're going to have double lift pushing bottom. He's going to get this bottom turret. He's gonna go all the way to tier two. LeBlanc is gonna back and have to go straight to answer double lift because Sivir is right here and Apollo is gonna to have to pop his ultimate to get to this group because of the fact that LeBlanc did not have her back interrupted by Zion Spartan. Therefore, he is the closest person to go answer that and he needs to get there to even out the numbers. Poe Belter also backs from the mid lane though. He ends up going straight into this fight and he actually gets a piece of it by the end of this fight. And there's some brilliant little team fight coordination as we get into the replay here that you're gonna see from CLG that gets broken down on a micro level and a little bit of a team fight level. So as we pull that up on your screen here, you're gonna see just how CLG executes it here. And this is where Zion Spartan, his boomerang is up and he's ready to interrupt this as we get into it. So they know Rush is there, Pink Ward sees him. They're like three people are top right now. There's three of us. There's four actually counting Hecarim. She backs, three on three. Two people went down, they're split. They're gonna come around. Zion Spartan uses his E here, and this is great. Because what's gonna happen is Aphromoo covers the option straight up the lane to get impact. Zion Spartan, he doesn't have his E anymore. So he can't really go in a different direction unless he gets the lantern to get himself in there. But like Smithy, he's lagging a little bit behind, but this works out in CLG's favor because he's gonna turn his butt around, he's gonna end up here and cut off the other option from impact escaping. And that's just as we continue this clip out, you're gonna see what happens. Because they had two people up there, impact cannot go that way. He goes down, runs straight into Ix Smithy. Now, Sivir's gonna pop her ultimate. She needs to get here as fast as possible. Adrian comes in, Rush comes in, because they split down bottom, and this is the three on three fight. Smithy gets out, Zion Spartan, great ultimate against the wall, and now Apollo shows up. Now it's finally an even fight, but by the time he gets there, there's already a double kill down. And Poe Belter, since he came from that mid lane back, he gets into this fight, he gets a little bit of it at that end. And Xiao Wei Xiao, he was down bottom answering double lift, who already is moving up to this fight if it continues. So double lift would have made it there if it had been a longer fight, and he would have made it there before Xiao Wei Xiao. So, that's the play there from CLG versus TIP. Now, that's it from me. Let's go head over to the analyst desk with Dash as he has an interview ready. Thank you, Zyrene. Joined here by Zion Spartan and Doublelift after a very solid victory there. We were joking going into the game, this is going to be the battle between order and chaos. As we know, Impulse loves to play a chaotic game. They're very unpredictable in the way that they play. How did you guys feel you stacked up against the chaotic movements of Impulse? Um, well, I can speak from bottom lane because I know that's like my only field of expertise against them. And they play really crazy and they're always going for like really aggressive plays and dives uh, when they outnumber you. And it was really hard actually. Normally Afro and I thrive in chaos, like we're really good at scrapping and fighting 2v2, 3v3. But even them, they give us like a pretty big challenge. And I think um, like 10 minutes in the game, I was three and three where um, another team wouldn't have given me so much trouble. Well, you did have the fantastic early gank onto the top lane, but actually before that, I do want to talk about the level one that happened here because we saw what appeared to be pr a pretty standard level one. Early invade, dropping the wards for vision, setting up to take the blue buff, putting uh, and having your AD carry and support on that, on that side of the map to make it strong side. However, you're up against an Evelyn. So Zion, was this something that was considered the fact that Evelyn was going to be able to walk through those wards and you guys would never have known that you were actually walking into a straight up 3v4 because you had back to go top lane? I mean, yeah, it's definitely a possibility. I think the biggest thing is we just messed up our wards. So we didn't even have every lane covered. So we didn't even know where like their whole team could be. Their whole team could have just walked top lane and it would have been five people sitting in the brush. So that was probably our biggest mistake that game. And we didn't really think about Evelyn specifically walking through the wards, because that wouldn't really matter. What would have mattered is their whole team being there, and since we messed up our ward vision, it was really bad. 
All right, but a small miscalculation there, and you guys clawed your way back into the game after that. As I mentioned, the quick gank top lane secured two kills for one up there for you, Double Lift. Uh, the other thing before we get into the rest of the game is the fact that the Fizz and the Yasuo bans came out. And uh, more just a curiosity as to whether or not that's just an immediate response to yesterday's play, or if this is something that Impulse has been showcasing throughout Scrim, saying, like, no, we will play this all the time, and, we, and you're not up against uh, the double assassin. Uh, of their team? Well, I think we've just seen them play it in their yesterday, or game from yesterday, and it seems pretty frustrating to play against. And they're the only team that runs it, so it's not like you have a practice partner to like play against Fizz Yasuo. And honestly, in this meta, it's pretty random. I don't even think it's that great. It's just one of those random tip strats that they run. And um, Coach Gray, the boy wonder mastermind of our team, he uh, decided <laughs> to This guy's got so many different names yesterday yeah, on yeah. the desk. He truly he was is getting a, different, different nicknames. He's truly a gift to us yeah. all. Wow. He's, he's all great. right. Gen sounded very genuine there. Uh, Zion up against Impact in the top lane. On the desk prior, we were talking about some of the best top laners in the league. You and him both being up there. How, you know, how is it playing against him? And uh, in, this, in this game specifically, NAR versus Hecarim, we saw a lot of influence from both of you across the map with teleports and in these team fights. How do you feel you stacked up in that 1v1? Um, I feel that game actually had a lot more impact than him. And Okay, I, I honestly didn't mean to say that pun. Like, Please. <laughs> I honestly like, did not think about that at all. But yeah, he just, he got really greedy for like golems and stuff a lot of times. And like that's why I got like a solo kill on him. He was just like making mistakes and he was pushing with no vision and... I was honestly surprised at the amount of mistakes he was making because I don't really think I played spectacularly, uh, spectacularly, but um, he just overextended a lot and we took advantage of that as a team and individually. So I just had a lot more pressure and game impact than he did that game and we were able to win. So, All right, and we saw the Sedge pick locked in here. Double if this is to you. In the past, Dick Smithy has gotten a lot of flack for his Sedge play, but simply picking the champion <laughs> dem demonstrates the fact that the team has confidence in his ability to play that champion. So the, the question here is how does a pro team uh, discuss and develop the trust and basically the list of champions that like this is something we are entirely comfortable with everyone playing so that when you get to the stage here and you say Sedge is the right pick, you're not questioning the one uh, under you know subpar game it, that you're remembering from the past. Yeah, well, I know Smithy got a lot of flack for his uh, playoff game as Sedge, and I feel like in the like order list of things we consider when we pick <laughs> champions, dank memes is at like the very bottom. <laughs> uh, we just consider his performance in scrims and his overall performance as a player. We trust him, and like I know Smithy's a great player, and everyone misses Sedge ulties. It's just people are gonna really target him about it because. He messed up in one game really badly. Whatever, everyone messes up. Like, Faker gets solo killed by Febivin. That's not like a sweet meme everyone. Yeah, around. absolutely. <laughs> I mean, no, and that, and that is the point, right? Is the other side of the story here in that there was one missed ult. The rest in this game were actually pretty spectacular. He yeah. had a phenomenal ult there at the very end of the game to lock up those last two kills, secure the push down the top lane. Uh, you know, finally, kind of removing ourselves from this game and looking back down on CLG as an organization, spoke to Afro Moo uh, and Poe Belter a little bit yesterday about the restructuring and, the, and bringing in the two mid laners. I mean, today, Poe Belter 9, 1, and 10 on Azir with only the one death to kind of the cheeky... Uh, Evelyn coming out of nowhere kill on his back uh, seems to be performing very well so far so just from both of you want to hear how you feel the integration process is coming along and, and how you feel the team is evolving through the split so far mm, I think it's going pretty well I think like individually in terms of like mechanics and stuff we have all the lanes that can be really strong and like can go up against the top of NA so that's really good and we also have like what we had before with the shot calling. Like Link was a big part of that, but Afro has been stepping up. Like everyone's been stepping up on the team to like kind of fill that void, and it's been meshing along really nicely. And with like the structure we have and the coaching staff, it's just really easy to keep improving. And as long as we stay on that track of like improvement, uh, we'll be great for playoffs. But fingers crossed, you know. Yeah, definitely. I just agree. Like the track we're on. I think last split we got into the kind of hole. It's like, oh, we're pretty good. Now what? It's really hard to decide like what to do next, but um, now I think we know we're, we're not like the best or anything right now, but I think we're pretty good. 
And we definitely have the people on the team and the right roster and definitely the right coaching to I was gonna figure say, out what to do, like what's next. It and sounds like you have the rapport with the coaching staff at this point where, oh, yeah. you know. We sleep you... in the same bed. <laughs> great. I'm going to leave it oh, there yeah. then. I'm going to leave it there with congratulations on the victory for you guys today. A great first week to start off the split. Best of luck this coming week in practice and leading into week two. Now there's still plenty of league action coming your way. Next up, we've got Team Solo Mid looking to get a win on the boards as they take on enemy esports. So stay with us. <clears throat> What's a good song, guys? Uh, about a week ago. Starting from the bottom, now we're here. Oh wait, no, yeah, we can do that one. Start from the bottom, now we're here. I'll do the beat. <laughs> Rush comes up here as well. Great pressure from Adrian, the team. Zion Spartan throws everybody and plaques them up against the wall as a trophy. The dark passage to the light. What a savior. Oh, knocked all the way back. Impact not getting the situation he wanted. I'm looking at Elsar. Oh. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. There's Eve, there's Eve. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Hold me, hold me, I know, yeah, 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 I got you, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I going Alistar right now? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Alistar? Cut back, cut back. Hey, 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 stay together, stay together. On, on the tanks? Keep cutting back. Eve, 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 Eve. I'll get him, Eve, I'll get him, I'll get him. Okay, okay, can, can we go Baron? Can we go Baron? An ult from Poe Belter kept everybody out of the pit. Big Smithy follows through. He hits the Glacial Prison. Counter Logic Gaming walk away from week one, 2-0.